Well, hello again from Kingston. We've had a very wet week, but it finished on sunshine and the mood is good going into next week when the forecast's better. Thanks for watching the update and I'll catch you at the end. Monday set the trend for much of the week with a very wet start. But the determination to remove the temporary gravel causeway was evident in a stream of trucks from Mulrooney and other companies. With two excavators providing a steady fill service. Between brakes to refuel. Smoke and bubbles confirmed continuing work to remove piles that remain in the river, with an occasional need to re-spark the torch. Efforts that almost invariably result in success. With the dive barge beyond, the mighty LR 1200 lowered her boom for the last time. And a team of highly skilled mechanics set to work removing her blocks and cables. The persistent rain did not deter members of the workforce who have to be admired for continuing finishing work on the bridge. Wrapping up Monday will note the departure of shoring that is evidence of the removal of the first pass-through on the temporary gravel causeway. In a likely sign of changes ahead, road markings on John Counter Boulevard approaching Montreal Street were removed. Back on the east end, some weights from the LR 1200 were already loaded for departure. A rental crane from local company, C.A. Peters, would soon set to work dismantling the boom. But there's a lot of preparation involved beforehand. There's a lot of work involved, and it must all be undertaken in the correct sequence. But by Tuesday afternoon, the boom sections had been separated and neatly stowed and even blessed by a rainbow. Much earlier in the day, the dive crew had been back on station, with the diver labouring away in very shallow water and challenging conditions. As the relentless rain continued, so did the efforts to cut the latest pile. Finally, in late afternoon, with the diver safely back on board, with a little bit of energetic assistance from the excavator, the pile was pulled. Up above on the steel spans, Black and MacDonald were installing the last lamp posts to be placed on the bridge. Follow-on work included placing brackets for the pedestrian lighting and the lamp heads on the poles. And if you're wondering about the gravel removal, yes, that went on in the wettest conditions, unperturbed. It's important to mention too the great work that Sharp Landscaping are doing to create topsoil surfaces around the holding pond. Early Wednesday showed great promise, but the rain returned later. It proved to be a good day for making progress on the crane. With some major weight stacks removed and stowed, ready for later loading and dispatch.
Before too long, it was time to remove the first of the massive tracks. An operation requiring enormous care. Nothing is rushed on these occasions. Out in the river, there were preparations to remove the next pile. With the barge-based excavator again playing an important role. This was the last pile removed, releasing the dive boats to return to their base in Ottawa. Fresh from their success paving the bridge and Gore Road, Coco Paving spent Wednesday paving the woodland path that leads to Kenwood Circle. With results that held up really well to the rain later in the day. Wednesday provided the first opportunity for me to see the Genic machine deployed on the bridge. It clearly provides a very useful platform for work. And we'll close Wednesday by remarking the work performed by Sharp Landscaping beside the library. Thursday was a particularly wet and windy day, with many members of the crew taking an early rain day. No substantial work was done on the LR 1200. Some hardy souls started work on finishing the concrete surfaces, but in the wet, it's not possible to continue. Despite really foul conditions, the team did keep working on bracket removal. Beyond and behind them, it was noticed that the new lights on the bridge were being tested. And it almost goes without saying that Thursday's truly awful conditions had little or no impact on gravel removal. It must have been a huge relief to everyone when Friday dawned bright and clear. Down around the crane, the effort went into routine matters like servicing and oil changes. Nearby, crew members were pressure washing Pier 20 using a bucket lift. Work was continuing on span 19 to remove the remaining brackets. On the east side, work was ongoing to create the topsoil layer that will surround the holding pond. But the appearance of a road sweeper created the most interest. After checks and discussions, marks were laid down for what will be the final road marking on Gore Road. Before very long, online, a company specialising in pavement marking and maintenance began work. In fairly short order, they produced results that impressed. Technology involved is certainly interesting. Go to wildlife this week with a look at how far back the gravel has receded.
Well, I think you'll agree, we don't want too many more weeks of weather like that. But a great deal was achieved, and we'll be back next week with another update. So in the meantime, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching anyway. Bye for now.